Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vince. No one can withstand the mighty Groot. You are doomed. You and your town shall perish. Say all that. We got Chris. Kahan Quest. Great. And I'm Kia. Hello. <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, we are talking today about Annihilation Conquest, which is the sequel to Annihilation. Which we did on the show, when was it, like a year ago? Uh, last September-ish, episode 64, okay. I believe. Uh, great, great. Thereabouts, um, um, we covered it, because um, I think I had just seen Guardians of the Galaxy on Blu-ray, Guardians 2, <laughs> and I was like, let's get some more space comics in this, Mo. Uh, let's see yeah, the Guardians and, of the Galaxy formation, and uh, that, uh, that didn't happen. Yeah, Mar- so Marvel had kind of been neglecting their outer space stuff for a while, Annihilation was their big return to it in the mid-2000s. Um, that bug guy, Annihilus, tried to kill everything, and then everyone teamed up and killed him. And it was great. Except, uh, like, on their way in and, like, destroying everything, the bugs kind of fucked everything up. And so, after all that, they kind of needed to build up the galactic universe again and create a new status quo. And so this story is kind of about that a little little bit. Um, And really, when we say the, the galactic universe or the marvel's galaxy what am i trying to say like sort of galaxy cosmic cosmic, cosmic, yeah the cosmic section of their universe there we go when whenever uh like that had nothing going on after annihilation ended nova got an ongoing series um with three issues uh where he kind of comes to earth and says oh you guys are doing a civil war okay cool i'm gonna go back to space uh that was pretty much it and then annihilation conquest starts up Pretty much almost instantly after that. So uh, I think it was kind of a smart move when this whole universe, that section of the universe didn't really exist to just keep it going with another event to sort of see how things shake out, um, which is smart. Plus, everybody still has their own separate miniseries like they did with Annihilation. So you can still pick and choose like, OK, who do, who do you want to follow before you get into the main storyline? Yeah, uh, it, and it, it did the story and w- the way I like it, I, I kind of attribute infinite crisis to starting this model um, yeah. which was a dc book where they had countdown to infinite crisis which was like a an oversized single issue that kind of introduced the concept of the event and then it split out in a four mini series which is even better for uh the cosmic universe because none of these characters are being served um they mm-hmm. did that with annihilation one and they've done it again here with conquest so they had a big uh, like 48 page prologue and then they had four mini series following the characters of wraith quasar Nova wasn't a miniseries, just part of his ongoing, and then also Star-Lord. And then it all collapsed back down on the six-issue main maxi-series, which were yeah. a little oversized. Um, which I really like that kind of balloon and then recontract. And we made this note, or I made this note on Annihilation 1. It's a great event because nothing else is happening in this event yeah. except for this event. So you're not like, well, to see what happened with this character, go check out these other two miniseries. And I'm like, <laughs> right. no, I'm good. It's always right. annoying when like uh, you get like Spider-Man's miniseries for this particular event going on and also all the main Spider-Man books that are going on. It's like, all right, we, we get it. Did Spider-Man really need a separate miniseries for his actions in this event? But yeah, it totally makes sense in outer space. Chris, what were you going to say? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a good way to to uh, tell stories about these characters because at the same time you're like, oh, is K- is Quasar going to get out of this one? Because they have this Annihilation, you know, Quasar series, but this isn't the same Quasar as the last series. So it's like the last guy died. <laughs> so yeah. it, anything could happen. You know? Yeah, and like, pretty, like every character in this book is pretty expendable. Like you really don't have any idea what's going to happen. Like you're pretty sure in a regular event, like, okay, again, again, I use Spider-Man as the example, but Spider-Man's probably going to be fine. Uh, but like, I don't know about Wraith. Who's this guy? Star-Lord? Well, he hasn't to, been around in a while. To the point where I was reading, uh, I knew Nova died at some point in the Marvel universe, like in the last 10 years. And mm-hmm. I was reading the main series Oh, and Nova yeah. didn't show up for several issues, and I'm like, "Did Nova die during his mini?" Like I was, <laughs> like I was legitimately thinking, like, 
Oh, that must have been what happened because he's not in this book at all. Because um, that's the one I didn't read. I did read uh, Wraith and I did read parts of Star Lord and most of I, Quasar. I read them all, so I'll fill you in. I yeah, I probably shouldn't have read all of these things, but I read everything for the first Annihilation, and I just kind of liked knowing everything that was going on in the universe. Like it's kind of daunting to try and get into like a big Marvel event sometimes because. I don't know. I'm a bit of a completionist. I kind of feel like I, I want to know everything that's going on and it's just impossible to do. But with this, it felt kind of manageable. So I said, why not? Let's go for it. Yeah, I I, ne- I definitely never read those Wraith uh, one shots as a discerning consumer in uh, 2007 and 2008. <laughs> you made the right choice, out. my friend. You made the right choice. I was like, I'm going to read Quasar and I'm going to read Nova and maybe a, a little bit of Star-Lord, but no Wraith. <laughs> Oh, and see, I was mm-hmm. I was the opposite. I'm like, I know this is all going to be collected into one giant volume later down the line, so I'll just wait for the giant like 25, you know, 30 issue, um, big hardcover, and then I'll read it then. And spoiler alert, I never read it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was my plan, and then I was like, No, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks on this. I don't know any of these characters. Um, yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think for me, Quasar and Nova were definitely the most interesting. I think I said that about the first time around. Nova was the most interesting. And Nova uh, still, he was, I guess, like the flagship title for the the cosmic section of the universe yeah, here. I mean, it definitely in Annihilation 1, everything that's like cool about Star-Lord, you know, from the movies, like that kind of like braggadocio um, that Chris Pratt brings, yeah. like that really wasn't in Star-Lord, at least in Annihilation 1. Um, right. that, that whole like, kind of like cool roguish attitude was definitely in Nova. Uh, yeah, Nova feels more like star Lord than star Lord does. Uh, and plus Nova's, uh, got a, like kind of a, will they, won't they with Gamera as well. Uh, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, Oh, this like really makes it feel even more like star Lord. Um, so do but, we want to yeah, talk, a, should, you wanna talk yeah, about yeah, the prequels let's... a little before we get into the main series? I think we can be well. The prequels all happen after the prologue, so we should definitely at least talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that, that meant the prologue. Yeah, so the prologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prologue is a lot leaner than the last um, Annihilation. It's pretty. It pretty much just follows Quasar, um, girl Quasar, Phylavel, daughter of Marvel. Um, yeah, Captain Marvel, the original, who we just read about the death of uh, recently. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, in January, and he had a son because his girlfriend was pregnant. Um, Genus Vell, who became Captain Marvel also. Phyla, I think, was cloned or reproduced in a test tube or something. I'm yeah, not... something like that. Yeah. Um, and and it's, a, it's a classic Peter David joke of Genus and Phyla. Oh, clever. Clever Peter yeah. David. We haven't read any Peter David. We should do that sometime. One um, day. We all like him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so she beca- did she become Quasar at the end of Annihilation? Yeah, she like so. Annihilus the bug had the quantum bands, and she like took them from him when when they were killing him or something like that. So she's got them now, and so she's the protector of the universe or whatever the quantum bands. And, are and, she, to. and so we see in the prologue she's dating Moon Dragon, who's a bald girl who turns into a dragon. Um, and I was like writing That's, my uh, notes. Drax's daughter. Yeah. Yes. So I was writing my notes down. I'm like, so there's this moon dragon girl. I've never seen her. And then I was listening to the original uh, Annihilation uh, episode that we recorded last year just to brush up on it. And Chris goes, and we see moon dragon, Drax's daughter, who we also saw before. Um, and I'm like, yeah, so we've this, seen her a few times. This is at least the third time we've seen Moon Dragon, and this is the first time she's stuck in my head. Um, <laughs> well, so you mentioned instantly right now that she turns into a dragon. That was kind of like a big deal. That's not a regular thing she does. That's like one time that happens as a, a pretty big plot point in this uh, this comic here. Not that that big of a plot point. I thought she I like psychically like astral projected as like a dragon in like dreams at first, and no. then and then she starts showing up as a dragon. I missed some parts because I didn't read all of the Quasar mini. I was like, I don't no, think she, she can turn like into... permanently turns into a dragon on accident and can't turn back. <laughs> and nice. uh, yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> and that's Drax's yeah. daughter. It is, who's... it is good. His family yeah. was murdered, but I guess not murdered because obviously his daughter's a dragon. No, so like the like she got taken back and rebuilt or whatever on Titan and she was raised there again. Just like, you know, every once in a while babies get raised on titan you know how it is yeah uh, one one day vince trust me one day we'll do the celestial madonna uh she was raised <laughs> by the priests of Pama, and her and mantis one of them would be the celestial madonna we didn't know who at the time uh and it 
a spoiler alert, it wasn't Moon Dragon. <laughs> yeah, poor thing. She wanted to be the Celestial Madonna so bad, and it just didn't happen for her. Um, but yeah, you know, back to the prologue, it is a lot more focused this time around. There's less characters you really have to jump all around to. Uh, we don't see Wraith in this thing at all. We, <laughs> I don't think we see Star-Lord in this Yeah, thing. we do. We see Star-Lord. Oh, we he's barely, a, okay. Because uh, in this prologue, Star-Lord's like, well, everything got oh, fucked. Yeah, he, everything got yeah, fucked yeah. up as a result of annihilation. So, like, the Skrulls planet's fucked. Everybody's fucked except for the Kree, and the Kree needed to defend the whole galaxy. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we've we've hooked up with this group. I think they're called the Phalanx at that point, um, who are going to help um, bolster the um, technology of the Kree. And we've got a little test to demonstrate so we can get the government contract, the military contract, and they'll be awesome. And I'm like, this is not going to turn out well. I've read this story yeah. before. Um, they <laughs> yeah. are going to completely – it's like, well, we isolated just a small part of the system. Um, so this demo, we tapped into our system like, don't do that. We don't let it – We at my company, when we have vendors that come in, we fucking isolate them on a server so they can't touch any of the rest of our shit um, for this very reason. Because spoiler alert <laughs> – Because they might be failing. failing. <laughs> And the Phalanx completely take over all the Kree's military and basically destroy all the Kree. Um, and uh, and then they take over Ronan the Accuser, who was like a bad guy in the Guardians movie, but a good guy in Annihilation. And then he's possessed, so he's a bad guy again. But that's pretty much brushed away pretty quickly. Yeah, so yeah, the Phalanx pretty much like instantly takes over everything. And at first I was a little confused because they are a like technology-based organism. And so they infiltrate all the machines, but I guess they're techno organic, and they can also infiltrate humans. Which I was like, all right, that's kind of bullshit. They, they got like robot Until, stuff around their eyes. I'm, I'm with yeah, them. but then I learned like the more I kept reading about this as the event went on, I was like, okay, I guess this kind of does make more and more sense. Like that's just their race. It's like organisms that grew into technology and just like thrive on that. And then I thought about Cable. And then I remembered that it's comic books, and I said, okay, whatever. I'm going to shut up now because it's fine. I, yeah. I just thought about Cable and that. Thing <laughs> yeah, that. you know, he's got that robo arm that you can't get rid of. And okay, whatever. Uh, but no, I really, like, this set the things up very cleanly. Like, okay, everybody's trying to rebuild. This uh, weird race is just going to take advantage of everyone while they're down and just decide to take over. Like, that really makes sense to me. Uh, they fuck everyone over. And just like, I mean, it's a really, this is uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. Oh, yeah, this we didn't is, talk to the writing, writers, yeah. This is pulling out uh, characters from the Marvel Universe. Uh, Warlock was, I think, the first phalanx or one of the first. Okay. Uh, and the, they, the big phalanx story I remember as a 90s kid is the phalanx, co- phalanx Covenant, which was the origin of Generation X. Yeah, and we'll get into that. It ties a little bit back into, like, the new mutants and everything. Um, And you mentioned a character named Warlock, who's... Oh, boy, we're going to get him mixed up with Adam Warlock a lot. So um, Not that guy. (laughs) Yeah, so I think at this point, you know, we'll come back to that thread. I I, I have some notes about that that I want to talk about. Uh, But for now, let's let's keep it simple. I think... um, Have we mentioned enough other stuff about the prologue that we can jump into everything else? Well, I mean, then Uh, it's just cool because then... They have the four different miniseries that all explore how the phalanx has infiltrated and controls people in different ways. But if you don't really give a shit about all that, you can really just start with Annihilation Conquest. One is like, phalanx has taken over a bunch of stuff. Um, now our good guys need to defeat it. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, you get to see oh, like yeah, the, the, the different per- permutations of the dystopia, but yeah, it's not necessary. Yeah. yeah, it worked pretty well for me. Um, Quasars is the one that I think was probably the most important uh, because uh, I have like a million notes for this thing because I was doing everything. Um, so she's like the brand new Quasar. She doesn't quite know how to use this power, but the Phalanx has completely cut off all of Kree space from the rest of the world, and that's where she's getting her energy from, so her bands can't recharge. And so she's like kind of on a timer where she only has so much energy to spend. And meanwhile, she has to go look for some savior, like some voice that's coming from her bands is telling her to do that. Uh, Moon Dragon gets injured at this point, turns into an actual dragon, uh, and they can't do anything. But when she goes and finds this big savior, it turns out to be Adam Warlock, who we're talking about, the Golden Man. Uh, we, we talked about him a lot during some of our old Jim Starlin stuff. Uh, we did his he, book, actually. Yeah, we did his book itself. Uh, he shows up in a lot of that Infinity stuff, but he's back. Um, 
he's been sort of resting and re- being reversed in some cocoon, and he gets out a little bit early, um, but that's going to come into play a little bit later. Uh, Star-Lord is kind of gets assembled randomly with this Guardians of the Galaxy team, and they do this fun adventure. Great. Um, that's where he meets uh, Mantis and... Um, Rocket and, and Groot. Groot. Yeah. And a few other people who are less important. Um, the guy uh, named Bug, right? Bug, yeah. Yeah, he's from the Microverse a while back. I remember... Uh, do you guys remember the Microverse? I don't. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, tiny little universe. Um, who could forget? Who could forget? <laughs> uh, there was... Uh, so the Wraith one is the most forgettable. It's just like this random Kree who has like a bone to pick with some people who killed his parents. We never even find out who that was. God, that was lame. And like, well, because that's the one I did read because I'm like, he wasn't in the prologue, so I probably yeah, should I figure out what who this, this dude, guy is. Who's this no, guy's dude, deal? That's, that's clue number one. If he's not in the pro- prologue, you know he doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I feel uh, solid about my 2007 decision making of being like, Wraith, this guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, he, you know, by the end of it, I guess it was okay. Um, it was an issue too long, though. It didn't need to be. A yeah, it didn't need to be there. Super Scroll showed up in there from the original Annihilation, really for no reason. Didn't have to be in that, but I guess I just wanted to include What's him. What's up, Clert? Yeah, Clert. <laughs> That's right, Clert. <laughs> uh, so you know what? We'll, we'll just get into this. We'll talk about everything else as it comes up. Um, conquest number one. Uh. So we've found Adam Warlock, uh, Phyla and Moondragon did, but Adam Warlock really just doesn't know what the hell's going on. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to probably go back and forth between, like, Phyla and Quasar. Same person. Boy, which one should we pick? Quasar? Phyla? Quasar. It's named Quasar, right? Uh, they find Adam Warlock. He doesn't know what's going on. Uh, Ronin and Wraith and Super Scrawl. And Praxagora, was that her name? That was Super Scrolls, like, robot girlfriend. Do you remember that? Yeah. From Annihilation? Yeah. She was there. Uh, and some other character named Raven. Uh, you know, I, I'm Raven reading off was, my notes. Raven, I, Raven was in, I think, in Annihilation 1. No. Um, I, I wrote maybe all these names Ravenous, down. Ravenous, though. Oh, maybe that's it. Ravenous does show oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wrote down all these names in my notes, thinking they were going to be more important characters. And they really weren't. I just felt like such an idiot reading all those people's names because they don't matter at all. Um, but Ronin is the important one here. He's headed to Ravenous. Ravenous was Annihilus' second in command during the whole bug invasion. He's and the he one said, that I thought looked like Green Thanos. Yeah, he does look like, yes, like Green <laughs> Thanos. Right. Yeah, it was confusing. <laughs> um and he's like, hey, you know, we have a kind of a plan. Can we team up with you? Because we don't like these robots. Uh, and they're like, yeah, okay, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, they just want to take their home back because they had invaded their their home on some Kree planet. Um, you've got the High Evolutionary. Have we read about this character before? Yeah, Chris, please tell me who the High Evolutionary is. Yeah, jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just what by we pay that you game, for. You know it's Come on, be something. <laughs> So the High Evolutionary is a, I believe he first appeared in Thor, uh, but he's basically, the the long and the short of it is he's a sometimes villain who has the ability to, he created the Animen, uh, created the midwife of uh, Magneto's wife, uh, so he, the Bova, the cow woman, that <laughs> raised... <laughs> Look, don't cut me off. All so right, he was more I'm like sorry. the high evolutionary, right? <laughs> yeah, so he <laughs> he was a geneticist who then, uh, I guess, ascended into some sort of level of godhood, whatever, uh, who created this. He basically found, you know, the, the, the human genome project equivalent in like 1960, whatever, uh, and then became a mad scientist type character who created his own race of animal people. Uh, who lived on Wondagore Mountain, uh, oh who, who raised uh, when Magneto's wife, uh, Magda, was pregnant with uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, uh, and she died. Then they were raised on that, that mountain. Later, they left the mountain to, to go to Counter-Earth, where uh, Adam Warlock was... Uh, 
accepted as part of the High Evolutionary Party, even though he wasn't created by them. He was actually created by the Hive. Uh, and But the Man Beast, the evil uh, Wolf Man that High Evolutionary created as a sort of devil character, would fight Adam Warlock on this counter Earth. Uh, all this is stuff from the 60s and 70s. It's very trippy and like he's like a God Man type guy. Um, they, they've retconned him so many times back and forth of being like, is he a guy who has powers or is he like this godlike entity? Who knows? All right. Yeah. That's about the, the, uh, the gist of it that I could get from reading this stuff. Cause I'm like, it seems like he's Adam Warlock's dad or something like that. Yeah, or I he thought, just likes to make people. Yeah. I was thinking he was like a, like a big, like eternal or something like that, but I guess I missed Yeah. It. But he's just made, some... He's, He's made the new Cree. He's made some new genetically yeah. uh, superior Cree. New Cree spelled with N U, so you know it's like classy. Yeah, they uh, never really come back into the story either, though, do they? I also don't understand how that's really the future of the Cree if you're just going to replace them with a new species. I'm not exactly sure how that plan works out, but. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, anyways, he's like, I mean, oh, welcome. Oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and read uh, Maximum Security by Kurt Busiek. Uh, they try to talk about some of this stuff. It doesn't really work. It's not the best, but they try to explain some of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, uh, after that, we uh, get this big reveal because we uh, know that the Phalanx is behind this whole invasion and they are the uh, the robots that are doing it. But then we find out, oh no, there was one big bad behind the phalanx. Who was it? Can you guess? Do you know which robot there was who uh, hates everybody and wants to see them all dead? <gasps> it's Ultron. Oh my God. I didn't know Ultron was going to be in this. Oh, really? Uh, I spoiled this like three really or four not. times on this show. I forgot it completely. <laughs> I completely, because I had read all of these minis that Ultron has nothing to do with. I just kind of completely forgotten that he was going to be involved in this at all. I'm not going to lie, surprised. they, they, they did, the, the amount of time they spent on the Phalanx to then reveal it was Ultron and it makes total sense um, is really smart. Like, I, I really enjoyed like you that, kinda, yeah. They, they delay it just enough for you mm -hmm. to forget, like, even if you're like, oh, yeah, I did remember reading that. Um, apparently, yeah. this whole book came out of the fact that um, it was originally just supposed to be a Nova story, um, and they were like, well, the Avengers threw Ultron into space sometime in the last couple of years. Like, why don't we throw them into this uh, cosmic stories? Um, and then we'll just have like Nova fight Ultron. That'll be cool. And then the, this book kind of like got bigger as a result of that. Yeah. Pitch. It's, I think that's really smart. Uh, speaking of Nova, we should talk about him a little bit right now. He's the only one of all the characters we mentioned who has his own ongoing series and it is running alongside uh, the event, everyone else's series has series has already ended. So I guess it might just be easier to sort of like pop in and say, here, and here's what Nova's doing now. Um, he had to get away from a bunch of evil robots, uh, flew, like created a portal out of there. Uh, and then he like flew to the edge of the universe, just trying to get away from it all, figure out what's going on. He met Cosmo, the Russian space dog. I love oh, Cosmo. Best, the best character. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, they flew inside I, the head of a giant celestial called Nowhere with a K, Nowhere. I, yeah, I was so uh, happy when a, Cosmo had a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He's the best character in uh, those issues of Nova, for sure. In Nova, yeah. In Guardians of the Galaxy, he's literally just a cameo. He just growls at Rocket yeah. Raccoon. But I was still <laughs> like, that's Cosmo! <laughs> I love Cosmo. I love Cosmo. Yeah, um, but Nova, Nova's overall goal, I'll just mention, so we have an idea of what he's doing, is to go to the home world of the Phalanx, where they were born, to see if he can find something to to help him. Um, so we'll get to that, hopefully. Vince, were you going to say something? No, I mean, I was just going to say that Nowhere was also in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, um, and uh, probably, this is a weird thing, but I don't know where else to fit it in. Uh, Star-Lord had, like, a weird robot eye. Like oh, Terminator. yeah, yeah. And then and, in one of the prologues, uh, they made him look like a real human again. Um, right. If that was in uh, that was in his own one. Yeah, uh, because this is like a techno-organic virus. They're like, oh, maybe we should take our technology out of people. Um, that's also why the Guardians kind of get formed is because, like, hey, let's just send some, like, people that don't need technology to get shit done as, like, a team to see if they can figure things out. And, um, uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. 
I, I think overall, I like this sort of idea of people getting, you know, quote unquote, zombified with this virus because a lot of people can be sort of taken out of action, but really they're just turned into bad guys temporarily. Yeah. Uh, or it, you can still you still have the option of killing people off if you want to. It's a it's a fun little thing. Yeah, I think I mean, like for as like lame as uh, Avengers one is using Hawkeye just to be possessed by uh, the bad guys for half the mm-hmm. movie. It does also be like, oh, we can establish Hawkeye as like a legitimate threat and like that he actually has some like capability. Um, right. It doesn't really work out, but and then you can also yeah. like say like, hey, he's not just like one of six on this side; he's one of the other side, which gives him like a bigger role and more prominence. So mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. Like sometimes Ronan's bad, sometimes Blastar's bad, sometimes these guys are good and whatever, and it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I I, I do like we've talked about it a little bit in our original Annihilation episode. I love the design of all these Jack Kirby characters like uh, Ronan and Blastar. Like Blastar gets captured and like Blastar is a stupid character who has always kind of sucked. But at the same time, like as he's having like his last stand, you're like, actually, Blastar is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. This book was like I was like fuck Blastar, I don't give a shit about Blastar. And then, like, he's like, he's holding out. I don't think he's going to be dying from all this torture. I'm like, come on, Blastar, pull through. Yeah, you can do it, Blastar. <laughs> I believe in you. Oh, and then he turns into a bad guy because he's been like, oh, no, Blastar, you're on the wrong team now, no. He looks a bit like the guy with the terrible name from Guardians 2. Was it, like, Talonface or something? Taserface. Taserface. Taserface Taser is the bad guy in the original uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one in 1990. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so anyways, um, back to uh, Conquest and what's going on there. Uh, yeah, Phalanx is, they're, they're like interrogating Blastar right then and there. And like, they just straight up kill him at that point. And they're about to like... Uh, like, that's part of their plan. Uh, but the Guardians are like, oh, no, it's okay. We we release some spores onto him, and Groot is going to, like, use them to create a map throughout the whole thing, and Mantis is going to use her psychic powers to show us what's going on there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I feel um, like this is a spoiler for Avengers Infinity Part 2, so if you don't want to be spoiled by how that movie will probably end... Uh, Mantis and Groot working together to somehow have like a map created through some a character's death. It's uh, a cool it's detail. Just, just tune all that out because it probably won't ha- won't come up again, right? Yeah. I okay. I have a question. Um, I read so many of these things. I don't remember where Groot was talking, but sometimes Groot was just doing his "I am Groot" thing, and sometimes he was just talking like a normal person. And I don't understand. Well, I think in this one he says, I am Groot. But he does one time say, well, I am Groot. And I was like, <laughs> well, in the prequel, in the Star-Lord prequel, he was definitely talking like Uh-oh. a lot. Like way too much. Mm-mm. And well, I don't understand. Like he was like, I'm a prince uh, and I need better. Uh, like I need to be treated better. And like kind of like an asshole. And I'm no. like, this is not... I'm very confused well, by we this. we did read Groot's origin, Tales to Astonish 13, and Groot we'll, does we'll have get a full... To that we has a, he has a full go vocabulary there. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I'm just going to say, canonically, maybe when Groot dies in this story and he comes back as a sapling, a.k.a. baby Groot... That's, that was that's my when, thought as well. That's when they decide he just says, I am Groot, um, which um, is a better choice. That's just how they like... I, Vince, that was my theory as well, but again, it does not hold up in the Star Lord mini <laughs> because he does die, comes back as a little twig, and he's just like an angry little twig who's mouthing off. And uh, it was again just he's an not angry what little I twig said. in the Star Lord mini. Yeah, it was. But then like, he dies in this the bit the main series though. Right, but before that, it's like he has to. No, okay, maybe he didn't completely die then, uh, but I do remember him having to like get completely demolished as a big thing and there's only like a tiny little piece of him left so you're right he got chopped down to size but he didn't die so i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna say your theory still stands maybe reading 30 uh, issues all at once <laughs> lends boy you know i got very confused there's too much going on here uh we got to mention gamera and um uh drax the destroyer what are they doing oh they've been assimilated and they are chasing nova cool cool um what else is happening? Um, um, no, uh, what else, What are my notes say? Ronan struck a deal with the phalanx. I'm not sure why. Right, right. Well, it's because he wanted to get under his um, throne because he had like some hidden stuff over there. I don't remember what it even was. Um, but really, the important thing is that uh, Wraith 
has some power that makes him immune to the techno virus and they can kind of fear it like he can weaken them a little bit which is important that's really the only important detail about him um is there anything else with wraith no um high evolutionary is kind of arguing with uh quasar and moon dragon moon dragon who has turned into an actual dragon at this point um and then Ultron kind of shows up out of nowhere and rips a damn hole into Moon Dragon and kills her. Oof. There's a lot of like, just like instant teleporting in this in this thing. And then I'm like, well, oh no. Ultron, Ultron is a character who's good for that because he can just sort of jump into any body and make that work. Like as a computer, just jump into any machine. Cool, cool. Well, I, I was, he can also teleport, so. Wait, he can? He can completely teleport? Yeah. Oh. Adam War Adam Warlock is like, uh oh, everybody, they're about to teleport, and they're like, "What are you talking about, Warlock?" Oh, <laughs> and then the Phalanx all show up. Oh man, um, that's that dragon's heart out, and you're like, "Oh shit, this is on." I really like Ultron in this book. I'm I'm it, it, I like it, him too. Yeah, he's I've, been, I've been doing all my Avenger movie rewatches, and I've been watching Age of Ultron. I'm like, this this Ultron sucks, and then I read this, and I'm like, this Ultron's awesome. Yeah, like, this Ultron's and, awesome. Yeah. I wish, uh, you know, like, I wish there could be, like, a TV show where, like, James Spader could come back periodically, because I feel like there's potential for it to be good, but the movie itself was bad. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see Ultron lots of times. I don't want to see Ultron one time. That's one of the, the benefits of the uh, comic book slash TV show format. Uh, hey, by the way, if you like TV shows and you like Outer Space, check out Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They were in space this season. I know I keep plugging it all the time. Oh, my God. You guys have to watch it. Uh, okay, back to the back to the show. What do we have here? Uh, Ultron really wants Adam Warlock for some reason. Um, Wraith uh, unleashes... Oh, the, okay, this happened in this issue. Wraith unleashes on Ravenous, and uh, Ronan takes control of that whole city. Uh, the Guardians are planting explosive everywhere. Uh, Blastar gets reassimilated. Uh, oh, Captain Universe. We didn't really talk about him. He joined the original Guardians of the Galaxy, or this sort of new team... I think he was on the original team as well, maybe. Um, what is the name of his power? He has the, the uni power, which is a terrible name for a power, I think. But he seems like a pretty okay dude. He's like a military guy who's just hanging out in space, very polite. Uh, the power leaves him, but he says, you know what? I kind of like being on this uh, team. I'm just going to keep fighting for you all if that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool for a while until he gets dis disintegrated. Uh, poor guy, he's dead. Uh, first, our, our first sort of big casualty. No, we've had some other people die. Some yeah, Shi'ar lady, death yeah. something. Well, and Moondragon dies too. Well, uh, oh, that's right. Moondragon, she completely dies. Yeah. Which was sad. You know, poor Quasar and Moondragon. Like, they have this, this love. And then Moondragon goes and turns into a dragon. It's like, it's very slightly difficult for a second. Then they're like, no, you know what? We've got a psychic bond. I still love you, even though you're a dragon. We're cool. We can still be together. I think yeah. they, this book does a really good job between the prologue and the prequel series and this main series of establishing Quasar and, yeah. and her relationship with Moondragon really well. Especially because I know I've read Moondragon three times because we have the evidence at least. But this is the <laughs> first time I've ever seen Moondragon as far as I'm concerned. And this, I, <laughs> Well, this is the and, first time I've really like cared a lot about her storyline. I know she yeah. showed up in a few Captain Marvel books that I've read. And I'm like, okay, she's just kind of side character, whatever. But, but like, I mean, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like Moondragon, like, I really like you. I like you and Quasar's relationship. I like how Quasar is like, I can't live up to the other Quasar's legacy, let alone my fucking family Vel's legacy. Um, and Moondragon's like, you got this, boo. Like you're great. Yeah. Like really I can nice. help you out. Mm -hmm. We're we're good team. And then Moon Dragon dies, and you're like, oh fuck! Like this is not good for Phyla, and this there. is also not good for like Moon Dragon. I liked her. She was a dragon and a cool girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's another detail I really liked in the Quasar mini where, in those bands that she stole from Annihilus, Annihilus left like a piece of himself in there, and so anytime any sort of rage overtakes uh, Quasar, Annihilus sort of latches onto that and tries to get out. And she has to, like, keep him in. And so Moondragon's like, ooh, all right, you know, it's okay. We just need to calm down, maybe get you to train a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but finally, they uh, they defeat that little piece with uh, a piece of the last Quasar. What was his name? Wendell Vaughn, who died in yeah. uh, Annihilation. He's also in there. And so, like, together they defeat uh, Annihilus. And yeah. it was a nice Reg little moment. Regular Quasar. Regular uh, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a little bit of like Buffy, what is that, season six, uh, where it's like, oh, this lesbian character has finally found a partner. And, oh, she's dead. Hmm. Yeah, that was a little uh, disappointing. Uh, but I'm sure Moondragon will be back at some point, maybe. I don't know, actually. This was a fairly recent story, like 10 years ago. Uh, it's quite possible she, she hasn't returned from from death. Um, Probably not, right. because try to mimic like the, the movie universe where Drax's whole family is deceased. Like having Drax's family alive that doesn't make muddies, sense. muddies yeah. the water for for new readers. Yeah. Um, thanks, a lot, um, thanks a lot, Jim Starlin, making a confusing <laughs> origin. <laughs> well, you know, maybe in the movie, you never know. He might discover a long lost daughter that had been saved and something. That I could just, be a fun I movie. just, I was at the comic book store this week and I saw a book called Thanos versus Hulk, written written and drawn by Jim Starlin. <laughs> nice. And I'm like, and I'm like, Bruce and me are gonna love this because Bruce loves <laughs> giant things fighting each other. I'm like, I think it's perfect. This is my bo- yeah, it's got to be perfect, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right, so oh, go ahead, Chris. No, I was just agreeing. Okay, okay cool. Uh, so uh, on to conquest number four. Uh, Star Lord is being interrogated because he's gotten caught. Uh, oh, that's why Ronan wanted to get into that uh, secret thing. He doesn't. He's like, okay, I want. I need to like take care of all my people who have been turned into these assimilated robots. Uh, but I'm not even going to bother trying to rescue them. I'm just going to destroy that planet and put them all out of their misery. Um, that's his plan, and so he wanted to find his explosive so that he could do that, or his like password or whatever to get in there. I love. I mean, I I love that Ronan is, and it's it's a, again a credit to Abnett and Lanning that it's like this character has been a villain for so long, and he's just kind of a shitty villain, frankly, for most of his origin. But it's like when you have a character like this, it, it reminds me of like Magneto, where like when he does something heroic, he doesn't do it in the way that a hero would. He's like. No, I hate these guys. I'm just going to blow up the whole planet. <laughs> that you know? makes perfect sense. Yeah. It, like, he, he doesn't have this, like, moral code. He's like, no, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of blowing everything up, that's what happened to the High Evolutionary last time. He blew up his whole thing so that Ultron couldn't get any of it. Yeah, which is uh, why well, I was... Yeah, he blew up, like, their their star that they were on and then, like, teleported out and... Or not teleported, but escaped Well, Ultron in. teleported out, and then, yeah, everyone else, the Evolutionary, Adam Warlock, and Quasar were, like, protected in some bubble or whatever. Yeah, they left in, they, like, his yeah. kind of, like, Silver Surfer, Silver Bubble thingy. Um, mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. is why I was like, okay, so why haven't you destroyed Hala? It took... It took Ronan three issues to even get those bombs pointed at that planet. Well... Like, I, Ronan I, 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 and Wraith in general, like, their whole storyline is definitely the thinnest part of all this, and so it does feel like that part gets stretched out. If I had one, like, it's my only real minor gripe about this thing is, like, their part feels a little too unimportant, but, you know, no big yeah, deal. Yeah, I mean, like, generally speaking, this is a lot simpler than the original Annihilation. There's basically, like, yeah. three fronts going on. There's, like... Quasar and Warlock and the High Evolutionary against Ultron more directly. And then there's the Star-Lord and Mantis and Rocket and Groot and then the other guys who all die trying to destroy the Babel Spire. For yeah, basically War- everything is very, very clear as to like the intention. Like the Guardians are going to destroy that spire to get rid of the defenses, right? And, and, but uh, they don't really ever interact. Like, these stories are very segmented right. against each other. And then there's whatever Ronan is doing, like, trying to destroy his home planet for whatever reason. And the fact that I just saw another planet destroyed, or that star destroyed, I was like, and the fact that this universe is fairly small, all things considered, because there's this only this book, I was like, so why hasn't Ronan destroyed this planet yet? Why is it taking so yeah, long? Yeah. Like, I yeah. assume that, like, he's going to go through with it, because... It's I I everything's on the table. Like of course, yeah, of course the Kree home world could be destroyed in this story. Mm-hmm. That's not yeah, like not? A, that's not a like sacred thing. Like oh well, they wouldn't destroy Earth in a in Star Trek, and they wouldn't destroy Earth in the Marvel universe. Um, they might destroy Hala though. Yeah, Hala's Hala's on the table mm-hmm. all the time. Um, meanwhile, this would be a good time to check back in with uh, Nova. Uh, he is uh, has made it to. The the uh, planet of the phalanx with his which is K V C H a Kvich or Kvich I don't know how you pronounce it but that's the name of their planet um, and they run into Warlock here not Adam Warlock so we should probably start calling Adam Warlock maybe <laughs> just Adam and this robot guy Warlock uh, Warlock is this weird zany kind of black and gold robot thing 
Uh, I really like his character design, but he was part of the New Mutants with mm-hmm. like uh, Chris Claremont and all that. And Bill Sienkiewicz, who Bill Sienkiewicz, we talked about yeah. last episode. Yeah, that cool or sort of scratchy episodes, drawing yeah. style of his. Um, and, you know, I never read too much stuff with him, but I always wanted to because I, w- I would always see this character. And he just looks so weird and uh, kind of abstract almost. And I just love him. Um, I, I do love that design of he's basically in two dimensions at all times. Yeah. Um, and he calls himself Self. Uh, and he's just a little bit off, but he is one of the original, I guess it's from a race of people called Technarchs or the Technarchy, something like that. And the Phalanx sort of is an evil version that's split off from them. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Nova is like working with him to get a cure. Nova has been infected with the virus, but he's got all this Nova strength on the inside trying to keep it at bay. And so finally finding Warlock is able to like use his techno powers to cure himself of it and say like oh i've got this guy now okay cool now we can sort of head on down to conquest and uh save everybody over there in the main series because i'm i'm done over here in my series um and it's a it's a it's a cool sort of uh synchronicity that i don't think i mean like it's it's admin and landing trying to combine all this this disparate stuff of like the phalanx are an x-men character and warlock is an x-men character and he's named warlock because jim starlin created a warlock and then that guy died oh yeah and it's like an ode to adam warlock yeah yeah like it's literally like a reference to that guy Mm -hmm. uh and so they're like oh but what if they were both in the same sort of meta you know big event story these characters don't know each other it really wouldn't make any sense they have the same name even yeah but at the same time, it's like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, you know, they did the a fact- fun way of connecting them all together, which was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that like Ultron, who's like this, you know, he's a robot guy, but he doesn't know the Phalanx. But then he's he's just like, oh, like I can control AI. The Phalanx is AI, so I guess I'll just control these guys. And now I'm like, yeah, super powerful. Well, and, and issue five is all about that. It's a lot of flashbacks about seeing Ultron team up with the Phalanx. Um, oh, you know, we didn't mention it real quick uh, at the end of issue number four. The High Evolutionary turns on Adam and Quasar and says, ah, "All right, I'm just going to join up with the Phalanx now for a little while." Um, and he's like talking to Ultron to see what all this whole deal is. Uh, gets a glimpse in his mind, uh, and yeah, basically Ultron just showed up and forced himself onto the failings and said, "Okay, I'm a part of you now, and I'm in charge of you." Uh, which you know, I guess he can do that as a robot. Um, the Guardians have a great plan where they uh, go rescue uh, Star Lord, who's been captured. Uh, wor- worth mentioning, Star Lord doesn't even like being called Star Lord in this. He just goes by Peter Quill. He's like done with Star Lord, um, but Groot grows giant. All throughout this spire, they set him on fire, and uh, he kind of sacrifices himself for everybody. Uh, but don't worry, Rocket saves a little twig to replant. Um, Adam gets... Uh, oh yeah, Adam is part of this whole plan of Ultrons and the High Evolutionary. Basically, they link up together, and Ultron gets put into Adam Warlock's body, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, Quasar does not like it. She's yelling on, but, uh, you know, she's been captured. Nothing they can do. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Ultron has a, uh, super powerful body. And it's gonna be terrible. So everybody, uh, by the end of issue six, our last issue here, everybody's, uh, breaking this wall around Kree space. All these other races are like, what's going on with the Kree here? Uh, and Nova shows up to break through. He's got his robots with him, and uh, Drax and Gamera are there with him. Cool. Uh, like, the, he's not dead. Yeah. And there's also this uh, this other like like phalanx like parent self or something. What is that? That's mm-hmm. that's that's uh, that's Warlock. Oh, that's Warlock. Okay. Yeah, he calls himself Self. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, and he's he like from like... that right. He looks like uh, like one of the Twilight monsters from Zelda Twilight Princess by way of like mm-hmm. yeah some line. he does kind of look like it that. looks like yeah. that by way of like some John Romita Jr. like scratchy line work. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know this Bill, is the Bill reason Bill Vince. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is the reason I was really glad I read the Nova series because if I had only read this, I could imagine being really confused by that character popping in all of a sudden saying uh, he is 
their father and not quite knowing what it is. Um, I, also, I'm I, I, realized I, now. Go ahead. I, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly who he was, okay. but it also was the first time it was clear that like the phalanx was something else that Ultron teamed up with and not right. just Ultron pretending to be the phalanx because I don't know the X-Men history. I just thought like Ultron created like a bunch of like robot things that like took over everybody. And that actually, is what I thought for a while as well. So, yeah, I totally get that. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then um, I was like, and this made it clear, like, no, they've existed in their separate thing. And Ultron just teamed up with them because they have a they have a dad that looks like something from Zelda. Got it. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, you didn't know that that thing's name was Warlock, which is probably smart of them not to bring it up if you don't know much about him, because that might just confuse you more uh, with Warlock <laughs> versus Adam Warlock. Although he does call him his namesake at one point. Um, yeah, I think but, this book does a great job, though, of like. Establishing Adam Warlock's power is not at full steam. Like I've read mm-hmm. old Warlock books before, but this book does a good job of saying, like, like if you don't know who Warlock is, he's this kind of dude. He doesn't even know who he is, and so people have to yeah. tell him, like, this is who you are. And he's like, I kind of know I'm powerful, but so by the time that Ultron takes over his body, you're like, oh, like this isn't good. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. like it does a really good job of establishing that within the book. If you're not super familiar with Warlock, Adam Warlock, mm-hmm. so. Um, I also think the boss fight in this book is a lot of fun because you've got Adam, you've got Ultron inside Adam Warlock's body versus Warlock the robot, Warlock versus Warlock. I mean, that's pretty fun, right? Um, and Two then, Warlocks enter, one Warlock leaves. One Warlock leaves, yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, of course, when Warlock loses, it's boss fight. He has to take another form, so he jumps out of Warlock's <laughs> body. Uh, and he grows giant, as one would expect. He, like, builds up all his robots around him and grows into a giant version of himself. Uh, and so this is when we get Adam Warlock and Quasar. Um, Adam Warlock's body is just kind of lying there dead, but um, when Ultron jumped into the body, the soul was stored elsewhere, and so Quasar puts it back in the body, and they team up. I really like that section of the fight. There's a nice moment where... Um, uh, Adam channels all the dead souls from this planet into Quasar and so that she can like sort of refill her energy. Uh, also because that whole force field around the planet's been broken down, she has her energy back as well. So she's super strong again. Uh, then Wraith shows up because he's got that power that can mess with the... F- I don't know. He makes... Uh, it's I don't weekend. care about that guy. That's all he does. Um, That's all he and, does. That's and, all how he figures in this whole goddamn plot. <laughs> Yeah, I still don't know exactly why they didn't blow up the planet. Did we figure out why why Ronan didn't do that? It, it, it's such a weird move. And again, I feel good about myself for not reading Wraith. But it's so weird that the first Annihilation had Super Scrawl and Ronan having their own miniseries. And then in the second uh, group of miniseries, they're like side characters for this Wraith guy. But like, but like Ronan really is the important one. I don't understand why they didn't still focus on Ronan and let Wraith be a side character in Ronan's miniseries. Like that would have made more sense to me. Like there was a whole thing where Ronan in that miniseries had been captured by the Phalanx, been assimilated, trying to fight it, trying to like say, no, I have to protect my people, but I'm also like under their will, and I know that it's right and peaceful for everyone to be under their control, and like struggling with that. And yeah, I'm just realizing now after you said that, Chris, why didn't he get a miniseries? That's all way more interesting than the Wraith stuff. Yeah, it does make he's a side character in Wraith's book. It's silly. It's really silly. But um, anyways, yeah. Wraith does what he needed to do, and then we never saw him again. Probably, <laughs> I'm not. I don't know that for sure. Maybe he stuck around. The breakout character of Annihilation. The breakout Conquest. character. Maybe that's what they were expecting. I don't know. He was like the weird loner who's like quiet, and he's the cool one. You're supposed to like him. No. Nope. Um, I didn't really write down anything of uh, a prologue here. I guess everything's okay. They beat Ultron. That's it. The end. Uh. Did you write down anything for the prologue, Vince? I don't no, remember. Not, I mean, the epilogue? No, I mean, I did I mean, like, epilogue. Sorry, sorry, yeah. I mean, there's... It, it ends like you expect it to end. Um, it just ends, yeah. Uh, there is a nice afterword by Abdul Lanning, which I liked, where they basically announced uh, the start of the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, ongoing, yep. mm-hmm. which I find mm-hmm. really funny because we're in 08 at this point, and literally six years later, they're going to have a movie. Uh, <laughs> like, this, it's basically, crazy. this yeah. team... Um, which didn't exist in this form at all until six years earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I thought, we didn't. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I thought Winter Soldier was a quick turnaround for Marvel. 
Um, like mm-hmm. this is a recent story, and Civil War is a recent story. Guardians of the Galaxy was fucking quick. Yeah, uh, uh, we did not mention that Mantis did die. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, her death uh, was kind of sad. She's like, I mean, I wouldn't have told you that three of your friends were gonna die because you wouldn't have gone on this mission. And he goes, No, only two of my friends. And she's like, Well, and then like the next panel, dead because like yeah. somebody teleported <laughs> in and murdered her. And I was like, yeah. Oh, that's cute, Mantis. I liked you. Uh, yeah, I like Mantis a little different. more than I like Mantis more here than I like her in the movies. But really, Mantis I liked her more in the movie. I think she's a very different character in the movies, very but I think she's so quirky and unique in the movies that I liked her more. She's here, she's quirky. just kind of normal and boring. I she's think. just kind of like a spunky, um, you know. I like her. She's got a little more agency, I think, in the in the comic. But really, I don't I think her. she felt boring her. to me in the comic. I liked her. Huh? Um, spunky? She didn't seem spunky to me at all. I liked. I liked Mantis. She, all right. She, She's she's my type of alien gal with antennas. Um, All right, well we found something we disagree on in this comic, I guess. <laughs> Finally, I, um, I, I, I uh, yeah, Chris, go ahead. I do really like. I think it's Guardians of the Galaxy issue one or two where Mantis. Spoiler alert: she comes back. Um, oh, oh, cool. Where Mantis is like, oh yeah, one of the Guardians turns evil and tries to kill us in a couple of issues. So stay tuned. Like, <laughs> It's a, it's a fun use of the tel- telepathy where she's like, it's unfair to tell the rest of the team this, but I'll tell you, the reader, that somebody <laughs> is going to turn evil and, and try to kill us all. Try to guess who. That's funny. That That's good. good. I'm ready to... I'm, uh, will you mm-hmm. be reading next? I'm like, I might. I... I, I uh, yeah, I will. I'm with that. I want to keep going because, again, I've read everything that's happened in the cosmic universe in this iteration so far. Why not just keep going? It's easy to follow. Yeah, uh, try, try like to that. guess who could turn evil. Is it the person who has a known evil alter ego? Or uh, maybe it's Gamora. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that overall, I, I think that the story ideas are bigger in Annihilation 1 than this. I think this is a smaller story. But I think it's better written. Yeah, for sure. I think Abbott yeah. and Landing are better writers than Giffen. As far as like just like character moments and mm-hmm. yeah, I think and there's a lot of good plot moments, moments. I think there's cooler ideas in the Nihilation one, like using Galactus to power and like siphoning off his power for a Nihilus to do whatever his bullshit. Um, mm-hmm. I like yeah. that a lot more. Um, yeah, I do feel like it's such a lost opportunity, and yeah, it probably wouldn't have been like a bestseller in like Marvel in 2008 or whatever. But it's like I would have bought a Quasar book so fast based on <laughs> Annihilation She's Conquest. She's super likable. Mm-hmm. She didn't get a, she didn't get anything after this. I think um, she just appears in the other cosmic events. I but like her a lot. Book. Yeah, she's the best part of this book for me. Um, really great. That is disappointing. I'm trying to look it up right now to see if she got anything. Um, while I'm doing that, we should probably talk about the little bonus issue we read this week, uh, <laughs> which is Tales to Astonish number 13 from 1960. Y'all that blew is, my uh, mind. Y'all blew my yeah. mind telling me that Groot was a was originally created in 1960. And I'm like, that's not mm-hmm. true, guys. Now, now, it is a very different version of Groot. Some some uh, retcons have even suggested that it is uh, happens to be a member of the same alien race as Groot, but not the same exact person as Groot, or whatever we yeah. call him. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, Vince, I feel like you were very excited by this story. You want to talk I, about it? I love it. It's so silly. <laughs> Great. It's, I mean, it's a little Twilight Zony. Um, I don't know if it was recolored for Marvel uh, Unlimited, but it looks great. Uh, and it's it's this guy and his wife who fucking hates him. Uh, his <laughs> wife hates him, and she's like, "You are weak and soft, and you probably need to work out more because your muscles are not very strong." Um, what are you going to do against this tree thing? And so they're just rolling around and she's like, honey, two of our trees have gone missing. And he goes, I'm sure they'll turn up. And I'm like, how can trees don't just like turn up on the other side of town? And that would be more confusing to me if they did. Uh, And because Groot is this walking tree thing who doesn't just say I am Groot. And he is collecting all the trees in the neighborhood, kind of like Goldar from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, 2017 movie, if you've seen it. Uh, he's collecting no. He's collecting no. all the wood. It's a good movie. You should check it out. Um, he's nope. I, I was going to say kind of like the Ents from Lord of the Rings. Nope. 
No, Power Rangers 2017. That's your that's your pop culture. That's the all right, great. That's That's our only frame of reference. All right, Um, but he's just collecting everything because he's going to take an entire village, an Earth village, and AKA town, and he's going to put them in a giant wood net, and somehow the trees are going to be able to jump into (laughs) space. He's he's going to order them to fly. (laughs) Very confused. The Uh, trees are all going to jump into space and carry everybody in a net to go study on Planet X. I love it. I also love that Groot says, I am from Planet X. Like, that's the name that the planet has decided to call themselves. I love it's, that. Yeah. It's like such a golden agey, like, filled with these tropes. It's uh, it's amazing. It's, it's like seven pages. It's yeah. dumb. It doesn't oh, make any the- sense. It has no resolution, and I love it. Oh, of course it has a resolution. How do we defeat Groot? Well, the scientist who's super smart and thinks of what the cops didn't think of. Yeah, even though gonna- his muscles aren't strong. Mm, his brain's tough. Yeah, his he wife knows. is like, what are you doing in this lab, you loser? Go yeah. be a man. <laughs> uh, and he says, oh, I wonder, I'm just going to release some termites onto this guy. No, he breeds termites somehow oh, real quick. <laughs> he doesn't buy termites like online or like. <laughs> he breeds them, that's right. He breeds them. I don't know. I don't know how you like speed up the breeding of termites. I don't know what their gestation period is. but I don't know. Uh, but like the next morning, Groot is like ready to attack, like Argh! and then like just falls over dead because that's how termites work. Uh, and uh, everyone's like, "Oh well, I guess that's the end of the story." And that's it. Uh, yeah, this thing is, uh, I think, eight pages. Oh yeah, seven pages exactly. Boy. Oh, I just okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> It's so dumb, and I love it. Wow. And it has, like, uh, a prose page in the middle of it on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, there's, like, two prose stories in this issue. There's a few other ones. I did, I for whatever reason, just kept going, and I read the second one with the Abominable Snowman. Have you? Did you read that no, one? No, I didn't. It's, uh, it's, I'll just give you the twist. So this guy wants to go capture a photo of the Abominable Snowman, and he, like, uh, gets stuck up there in the mountains, and he's up there for so long, and he grows a giant beard, and somebody takes a picture of him, and he looks like the Abominable Snowman. Oh, Oh, what a twist. Uh, and that's it. It's great stuff. It's, all these stories were just like random twists at the end. These, these, I don't know how they sustained so many of these series, like Tales to Astonish, uh, uh, you know, Amazing Fantasy, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for so many issues, just coming up with these little bullshit stories and then drawing them all out. Because they like have some pretty nice art in a lot of these. Well, I mean, Amazing yeah, Fantasy. Is, is, is this Ditko art? It looks like it. Uh, it's yeah, good. it's good. <laughs> it is really. I mean, good. Amazing Fantasy only went fifteen issues, and they're like, "Fuck it, Spider Man, close this shit down. Let's go make." Yeah, Spider-Man. we're done. <laughs> Everybody prefers him instead of this uh, random uh, twist ending shit. I we're mean, doing. like, like that Twilight Zone anthology, like weird short story model, like was popular for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. it was huge. I mean, I mean, they would pros they would publish short stories in like the newspaper and shit. Well before that, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you know it's think, the, go ahead. Yeah, it's the fault of the comics code for keeping us from having a twist being that, you know, you're your own grandson or, you know, you rip out the spine of your enemies or something like that. You know, something cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. The comics code specifically no ripping out spines, no, no being yep, your own grandson. <laughs> well, uh, pretty much. <laughs> Speaking of uh, something think... that's approved by the Comics Code Authority, actually, Action Comics 1000 was approved by the Comics Code. Hey. Uh, which is weird, because I thought that was given up. I thought they were totally gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, but hey, that's a good segue. That's what we're doing next time. Uh, are we done with uh, all this stuff? Anything else we need to talk about? I will not continue uh, reading Tales to Astonish. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I don't know. I do think there's a lot more anthology-type stuff showing up again. It is getting popular again, especially with like Black Mirror and stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. Like That format has gotten big again because people appreciate that sometimes you have a good idea and it doesn't need to be a fucking movie so uh you know like in my Shyamalan 50 minutes yeah 50 minutes is about your limit again the Uh, the comic code won't let you tell a story where your prime minister fucks a pig they just uh, won't let you do it (laughs) fuck the comics code I'll I'll publish that issue without the comics code it's Harry (laughs) Harry Osborn taking LSD 
and politicians fucking pigs, and then and then we'll just do classic Spider-Man stories after that, and we'll have the comic <laughs> code. It'll be fine. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's talk about next time. Let's go on to next time. We're starting our like our weird other book club within a book club. Next time we're gonna read. <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths, which uh, I've been wanting to read for forever. Wanted to do for the show, but it's kind of like too big to do for the show. So we thought maybe we'll just read one issue at a time uh, every, for every episode, and then we'll just go from there. So next time we're going to start with Crisis on Infinite Earths number one. Uh, like in addition to what we do regularly, we want to do Action Comics 1000. Uh, it just came out this week uh, by... Brian Michael Bendis, his first thing for DC, which is pretty big. Like he's the guy who created uh, Ultimate Spider-Man and Jessica Jones and uh, uh, like Modern Marvel Universe, made Daredevil cool again, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so him heading over to DC is a pretty big deal. Uh, so he did Action Comics 1000, which is a big old like what 80, 90 pager, lots of little mini pages. He writes like I think a fifteen pager. It's got it's got you know everything. It's got stuff by. Dan Jurgens, Peter Tomasi. Uh, it's got Marv Wolfman with that Kurt Swan art that they found. Uh, yeah. Cool. That no, guy's that... been dead for, what, 30 years? Yeah. Got some. Uh, got a story with art by John Cassidy, art by Olivier Copiel. Um, everybody. Uh, Jerry Ordway and Louise Simonson have a story. Paul Dini has a story. Tom King has yeah. a story. So that'll be a nice opportunity for us to talk about a lot of these uh folks who uh have been around for a while while also like taking a quick little glimpse into what dc is doing uh nowadays uh and just to be fair we figured why don't we do that for marvel as well uh they have a free comic book day issue of avengers slash captain america which has the uh first tennessee Coates story for captain america he's going to be writing that uh so i'm pretty excited about that i like him yeah i'm really uh, excited because i know like christopher priest was was always like he was he didn't want to write Black Panther. He's like, Oh, I'm the black writer, so I have to write Black Panther. I want to write like Spider Man or Captain America or something. And the Coates has been kind of the similarly like you're writing Black Panther. He's like and they gave him Captain America and I'm like like and I know that you Kia, you were telling me before we recorded that Christopher Priest wrote Captain America, but Captain America and the Falcon. Yeah, um, it's like yeah, a different version of Captain America where he Get to tell get to tell unimportant stories that only involve the Falcon, yeah. right? <laughs> but um, but like this seems like a big moment that like Tennessee Coates is writing a black writer is writing the flagship Captain America book, and that's pretty cool to me. That like like oh yeah. well, fucking shit, Marvel, Marvel addressed one of my complaints from twenty years ago. So good on you guys. Um, <laughs> so um, it should be good if it's not good. Yeah. I've never actually read any of his Black Panther, so I've, I've read some of his yeah. pro stuff. It's pretty good, but um. Well, I'm mainly just doubtful about Marvel's free comic book day stuff. They always tend to just, like, give you not quite enough, and this is, like, kind of a preview. So, well, you know, we'll just pitches see. and bullshit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we'll see what it is. But, you know, we mm -hmm. figure this might be also a fun time to just peek into free comic book day, see what they have to offer. So we might talk about any stuff that we pick up that we uh, might have fun reading, but we're not going to spend too much time on it it's, because uh... that's uh, it's a pretty packed... We got a stacked card for next show, everybody. We got Crisis yep. on Infinite Earth One, Action Comics One Thousand, New Captain America, Free Comic Book Day. It's going to be amazing. Uh, join us. Yeah, go to your free local comic book store. They they're giving yeah. away free comics uh, Saturday, May fifth. So mm -hmm. go check it out. It'll be a week after this episode comes out. Um, yeah, go That's check Cinco it out. Cinco de Mayo. Oh my Cinco, god! Cinco de Free wow. Comics. So. Cinco uh, de yeah. Oh my god! All right. Yeah, cool. I mean it, it's it's gonna be fun. Some of your comic book stores may limit you to two or three issues. Um, go to other comic book stores. Sometimes they have uh, <laughs> sometimes they have other artists or cosplay. The place that uh, we're going uh, usually has like people dressed up as Thor or the White Ranger or somebody. So my son is very excited to go get some free comic books and also. Uh, that he can own for himself and also uh, take some pictures with cosplayers. They'll have stuff for kids. There's a new Tick book, um, Tick New Adventures, coming out uh, for Free Comic Book Day, which looks exciting. Power Rangers um, and then some other stuff like Berlin or uh, I think Strangers in Paradise has a free uh, sample issue. So anything under the sun, if you like comics. Yeah, there's some cool out. stuff that looks like it's coming out. A Bob's Burger comic, Invader Zim. Yeah, all, Bob's all Burgers with art problems. that doesn't look – Bob's Burgers with art that doesn't look like the TV show. Oh, um, dude, they've been doing Bob's Burgers comics for a while. Are they're, they good? Like, I've heard they, they're good. Well, I mean they always just do like random fun stories. I'm sure they're pretty hit and miss. I've read a few that were fine. 
Um, but lots of different art styles that come in and out as well. Lots of short stories throughout. And so like there are some good ones every issue and some like whatever ones every issue. Uh, but that's how it should be. I like the anthology type ones like that. Uh, worth looking at. DC Superhero Girls. Oh, my gosh. Doctor Who. Disney Princess Ariel Spotlight. That's maybe the one I'm picking up. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm very excited. Overwatch? I'm sorry. I'm just looking at all these uh, uh, now. Live. That's okay. I already have a watch. I don't need another one. Oh, my God. I'm Overwatch. Um, <laughs> ooh, a, brief, a brief history of Tank Girl. Uh, ooh. Now you're, now you're <laughs> of uh we got a james bond thing yeah uh, about warren ellis so spoiler alert don't get too excited a lot of the free comic book day comics suck but they are free and they are sales are pitches so and, yeah um, they get you in the store yeah yeah so you know and you know you might go in there hoping for tank girl and you might walk out with spongebob because that's all you could get but you know that's good oh starburns presents number one that's what i'm gunning for all right yeah see what happens um we'll see if i can even yeah i'm gonna try and make it out to a comic book shop i don't really have a great one super close to me here but uh i'm sure i can make the trek uh cool I, I, are we done here i think we've spent enough time talking about all this stuff it's kind of a yeah, long episode let's get out of here yeah let's get out of here good night everybody see you next time or I good agree. morning uh, right you're group bye <laughs>